Well, my question for you um, is uh, it's addressed to all. I'm very interested by the by the writings, early writings and late writings, both of Lina and you and your Ponti. And I think in their writings you could trace like different personalities they had. So, for instance, in the Habitat magazine, you can see how Lina wrote the editorial, wrote analysis of architectural projects, and wrote Alain Castro, which was a little bit of everything uh, together with her husband. And Gio Ponti as well, uh, in Stile magazine, in Domus magazine, you can see like different facets of them. Um, I'm interested in if the same attitude they had to the, to the writings they had in architecture. I mean, the development of the projects. You can start. <laughs> Your point is first. But I think, um, in, in some sense, it's great to put together the figures of Gioponti and Lina Bardi, but also we must pay a little bit of attention in the sense that uh, the, um, the age of the two persons and so the period they were living and the ambience at the end they were living was so different yeah. that uh, um, is a sort of uh, homage, is a sort of uh, mental construction, but I think we don't have to try to find too much point of relationship. It was a sort of relationship of uh, memory and uh, um, construction of ideas in themselves, in a very interior part of themselves. We can't find uh, too much point of, uh, of uh, um, similarity in the real work of the two. Because you must imagine that Ponti was uh, well known and had a lot of opportunities. He was building in all the world and he has done all kinds of experience in, in a society that was uh, beginning perhaps a little bit poor after the war, but not in the same way than Brazil. And then with expansion, expansion, expansion in the years of the building of the Italian uh, architecture and uh, architecture in the world. So it's totally another kind of situation. Uh, it's important to, to say for me that writing was a base for the two. And I must say that writing was a base in Italy till a certain point for all the architects. And this is very strange because um, abroad is not so common that one famous architect is also an important critic and can write in a literature way, way because uh, the Ponti texts are uh, very, very good also in an Italian sense, a, a kind of language that you can't find anywhere. So it was very important. Um, and, and I like very much the title of the exhibition. And I think that there is also a sort of lesson in not being too much specialized. I think that if uh, Ponti uh, will be there, will be saying to the students and to all persons, we must work with specialists, every time different, but we must not be specialists. And so this is very important in the moment that also in Italy the culture is changing and we are much more specialized. Uh, for my generation, uh, we were all architects. Then one was designer, another graphic designer, another was working uh, in school, etc. Now we have specializations. I don't know. Yes. So there's a similarity in what sense? Nesse sentido, há similaridade entre os dois. Yes. No sentido da não especialização e da generalidade. Yeah, in the lack of specialization, there is a similarity between the two, that both were working in many different fields. Yeah. Yeah, yes, in this point, there is a very close uh, abilities or close uh, things with, in, in, between Lina and Ponti. But it's important to, Lina arrived in Brazil and uh, 
moved completely from, from the atmosphere, from the ambience, from the culture, leaving Italy back and trying to, to be Brazilian, as I, I said. But she had an accent, a very strong Italian accent, but uh, writes very well in a very good Portuguese. The, the texts you can see in many books are very small texts, very precise, very direct, and very strong. And this was this uh, means the, the effort that Lina had to to understand the culture, to go deep in the culture, the the the, the, the culture of the Brazilian uh, of the Brazil. Uh, and uh, it's important to say I used to say to my students that they don't want to, to write now. This is a problem because I think architects have to, to, to write, have to put the ideas in, in, in a paper, uh, writing it, because uh, they, they think they have only to create things from nothing. They have to invent things from, as a magici uh, magicians, magicians. And Lina uh, can give us the lesson, this lesson that uh, as Ponti, to write is important for all architects. And uh, there is an, an article I wrote for uh, AA5? AA Files that is, is coming. Uh, is a kind of um, telling about uh, how can you, you build with a, a text. Lina believed in it. You don't need drawing sometimes. You can do a house or a building mm -hmm. with text. With text. <laughs> yeah, I think that just, I'm oh, sorry, this, uh, this, the point is the, the reflection, I mean, the architect, ref which architecture express something more than formal things. So in this sense, I think that the idea to, to, to build in texts and to have this uh, as an exercise and reflection that, <coughs> I think that what I would like, I would point out there is that this, also this look, I mean, it's not just by Ponty experience, but this moment and the experience of the war and the sense to start to look to life in the sense the architecture is part of this and then you can, as Marcelo said, use architecture as a, a tool to transform anyway. Right, hi. Um, a, lot of is, a lot has been written about um, critical regionalism. Um, I was just want, I just want to know um, what was Lina's role in developing a modern regionalism in Brazil, um, like tropical re regionalism, <laughs> etc. And I, I also want to know what the influences of other architects in Italy were on Geoponte and Lina, people like um, Ernesto Rogers and Perissuti. And also, if just finally, one, one, one question about the accent. How did the Brazilian people see her? Did they see her as part of the elite or some, someone else who could tell them what culture was? Or that's, sorry, that was a few questions. No, 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 I'm going to repeat that, yeah. But did you get the first point that I was trying to make? No, no, I'm going to repeat that. Can you repeat the question? So one was about critical regionalism. Critical regionalism and Lina's role in developing that in the notion. It wasn't modernism, it was a different type of modernism suited for the Brazilian climate, culture, environment, everything. You know? This this regionalism, it's not? Yeah, Oh, this is very bad. Regionalism critical. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can answer that. Can oh, why? this is the favor that, uh, that, that uh, can in front of me gave us this, the, use this term, uh, regionalism, critical. Because Kenneth Fronto came to Brazil for the first time the last year, <laughs> and wrote the book 30 years ago, <laughs> and put in the same bag, Brazilian, Alvaro Cesar, Oscar Niemeyer, everybody that he could not put in, 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 a, in, 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 in this, <laughs> those paragraphs of their books, he put in the same bag. This is very bad, cause a very big damage to the Brazilian uh, understanding of, of uh, architecture. I think this, this is my opinion. 
regionalism, tropical flowers, uh, the greenery, all these things as uh, came with uh, the mulatas and uh, <laughs> in the, this is the same the same way. No, 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 no yes. And Lina hated this, hated to use this, and hated to use also brutalist. Even brutalism is a very good term. If you go to the Smithsons uh, the, uh, way, this to be directed, to be very objective, Lina was like that. But use, to use brutalism as a, a rough uh, surface or a rough material, this is very poor. So Lina hated any comparison or any uh, rela relation that you could create uh, of the, her work with movements, with groups, with this or that or that one. So she used to say, I'm free, I'm inventing everything, even if uh, he liked to show many images, many references, giving some tips to us that uh, from where uh, things uh, are coming or ideas are coming. So this was Lina, but she had this uh, kind of paura to be <laughs> put uh, involved in, in some poor movements to be in jail, like, uh, I don't know. But in, uh, in Italy, but this is a very complicated question, I must say, so I'm not sure that we can go through. But uh, it's, um, which was the situation, let's say? Uh, you know very well that there was this sort of international style. Uh, when the war was ending, uh, let's say, there were in this moment two schools. One school was Rogers and Casabella, and the other one was Ponti and Domus. With Rogers and Casabella, in a certain sense, they were developing the idea of regionalism, uh, in the sense that they were imagining that reconstruction in Italy uh, would have uh, a, a success if they can keep informations from the background, regional background of, of the cities, and so entering in the, in the paysage, Italian uh, countryside and also in the city, with a more uh, quiet and uh, typical approach. Uh, Ponti was totally on the other side, in the sense that he was saying that uh, you must not reconstruct, but you must construct. So uh, he was thinking that uh, architecture has roots, as we were saying before, so it emerged from the, from the floor, but it's a pure form. So can't have anything that is, in a certain sense, too regionalistic. Um, we must say that um, the lesson of Rogers that was difficult and has uh, perhaps not such uh, beautiful forms in uh, uh, the building that were done has a great importance because there it begins the uh, problem of contest. So the architecture of 80s and 90s uh, comes from there. Well, I must say that Ponti was on the street of the great masters of architecture that has their own pure form. And naturally, they uh, use the ambience, um, they work in the ambience, uh, like, like Lina with the office in the place. You have seen Ponti drawing face of the cathedral. This was the same in some way. But then the form was pure and was a Ponti form. So it's, it's a very complex uh, theme, it's a very good question. And I must say that in a certain moment, let's say when I was beginning to study Ponti, uh, this was one point um, it was very difficult to say in the academy, in the university, that you were studying Ponti in the 80s, because you were thinking that you were a strange uh, architect <laughs> with a um, strange tendency, perhaps, because uh, Ponti has done also decoration and, and he has done yeah, fabrics, yeah. and so he was not so pure. While the other tendency that at the end has done architect not so good, like like Gregotti or like, uh, uh, I must say, also Aldo Rossi for me, <laughs> that were very formalistic, were considered um, intellectual and pure. Uh, 
it was a very strange situation, I must say. <laughs> There was uh, also a question about, uh, but did you ask questions. about how Lina was regarded? No, it's you said ah. something about the accent. So oh, did they uh, see her? Ah, Italian oh. accent. A as a Brazilian. <laughs> of course, some people use, say this is Italian because the accent, because it, Lina Bobardi, this. But Lina was a great Brazilian for us <laughs> to have here our representative. This is saying that uh, you know you're in Sao Paulo when you're speaking to a Japanese man who has an Italian accent. Because like, all, everybody in Sao Paulo speaks yes. with an Italian accent. Yes, that's <laughs> true. That's true. <laughs> this is very good. Good. Real. Hello, is this working? Yeah, OK. Thank you very much for the presentation. It was very, very uh, great pleasure to see Lina and to have such a, an important panel here talking about Lina. And I would like to take this unique opportunity to have you here to ask you uh, a question uh, because you know uh, Lena's work and Lena is a person better than anyone. So organizing her archive, it, it, which is a, a major challenge and a great opportunity, I would like just to ask if you found any references to Portugal or any references to other countries besides Italy, which we have already talked about. Because I found there were some, in, I'm not sure if there were some influences about Portuguese architecture or not, or, or even if that was relevant for her or not. And perhaps in the archives there might be some information of, of some data or some documents that might talk about it. And uh, I also think there is this uh, approach, anthropological approach and perception of culture, which I think has links to Fernando Tavro in Portugal. So that's why if you can talk about it, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. I speak in Portuguese and Anna will translate. Here. Eu acho que a Lina, ela tinha, ela era uma mulher do mundo. So Lina was a woman of the world que bebia em, em fontes, ela tinha uma erudição enorme e ela tinha uma, uma, uma pulsão de conhecer e de estudar sobre, e lia sobre tudo. So she read about everything and she was uh, very curious about many different things. E viajou muito. And she also traveled a lot. É, então ela tinha muitos interesses, era muito vasto. É, como fomos colonizados pelos portugueses, <risos> So she had many interests, but as we were colonized by the Portuguese. E, e somos índios e somos negros. Lina, also... Lina é, cultivava essa, essa questão da mestiçagem brasileira. Ela mergulhou nisso profundamente. So as, as we were colonized by the Portuguese, but we're also African and indigenous people, uh, she really dived into this hybrid uh, culture or this hybrid qualities of our culture. Nesse sentido, Portugal também estava no mapa dela. So, Portugal was on her personal map. Uh, uh, em termos de, de conhecimento Isso. dela sobre arquitetura, uh, sobre os arquitetos portugueses, acho que o Marcelo tem mais essa experiência. Do ponto de vista antropológico, ela tinha uma enorme curiosidade e conhecimento sobre Portugal so e sobre a Europa toda. Na verdade, ela era muito europeia, e estudava muito profundamente os assuntos. So in regards to the uh, to the architectural approach, Marcelo will answer the the question, but in regards to the anthropological approach or the more general knowledge, she was yes very interested in Portugal but also in the whole of European culture. She was a very cultivated woman. In the Lina's diaries that disappeared Mystery, uh, mysteriously <laughs> disappeared some years ago. Um, we imagine who took the, this, uh, <laughs> this diaries, you, you know very well. But uh, there is a, a reference to a Portugal when she uh, left uh, Italy by Naples. The, the, the ship is, is stopped in Lisbon. And there is a mention to Portugal as a very tender uh, note 
talking about the Portuguese and the, the, the harbor and the cats. A very beautiful text. Do you remember this? Yeah. Uh, very beautiful. But uh, Lina loved Portugal. Loved Portugal. Talked with us. Uh, for this, one of our roots, important roots, we, we have this matrix, the Portuguese matrix. This is our language, our way of thinking is very Portuguese. And Lina loved this. And uh, we had an experience. And Lina knew um, the the Tavara, Tavara's works, mainly the, the popular the, the the research on popular culture, popular architecture. This uh, doc document, a strong document, that uh, is really one of the best we have for in in any architecture around the world. So Lina knew that uh, that uh, Tavara or it's uh, here. Uh, his uh, work with the group of arch Portuguese architects. And we had uh, a moment to, that we participated in the, the competition to design the um, Centro Cultural de Belém, Belém Cultural Center, down uh, by Gregotti. You know. And Lina uh, was really, really free, full of ideas, the idea of the navigations, uh, the idea of the, the, the faro, como é faro? The the light, the, the light tower, uh, light, light tower. tower, light tower. So, if you go to the big book, you see some drawings for this project. But we, we had no time to send the project for the the the, the, the competition for in, in time. But Lina loved Portugal, and this was very strong. I have a, a book about the arch uh, rural architecture and Mantiqueira range in in Brazil. Very influenced by Lina and influenced influenced by this work that Lina showed me many many times the inventario of the Portuguese popular, popular architecture. Yeah. Ah, sorry. Just mentioned that at the moment that the fascination that she came to Brazil, there was uh, Lucio Costa yeah. making promoting this kind of a critical approach of the, yes. the modernism with the origin of the Brazilian architecture since the colon of uh, Portuguese, studying the Portuguese, and uh, at the same moment that you yeah. have these books about from Tabula and, and yeah. the crew. Yes, um, I, I have a question regarding uh, an Italian in uh, Brazil, um, because I uh, understand she left Italy and she had some luggage, and for some reason uh, she wanted to get rid of that in some ways. That's how I understand. But. Uh, Clearly, she was not the only one, as I understand, we are in a sort of post-colonial uh, immigrant society context which happened across the Americas, if I uh, understand that correctly. Um, and I, I think my, uh, my question really comes, um, you know, because um, she was, uh, I think, I'm not sure if I really have a question, but I think for, for me she operated very much in a, as a European, you know, the, the engagement with the, the primitive or indigenous culture, we can see something like Neutra and Schindler arriving from Germany or Austria in uh, California, going through a similar um, process. So I, I, I guess my, the two questions I would have is, um, why do you think uh, that it could be, uh, how do I say, a creative or productive luggage because it was never seemed to be very mournful or you know, the loss of something in Europe. Uh, so there's no nostalgia that I can see in the work. And second, if there is, uh, you know, is there a distinction across the a differentiation, let's say, from uh, the Northern America uh, experience or other experience uh, of immigrant architects uh, in the different Americas? For, for me? Yeah. Can I explain? Yeah. Is the question? Uh, I think that is for myself. Yeah. Can you help me? Uh, exactly what I, the uh, first one is. So you you're interested to know the the thing about the nostalgia. Uh, you you're interested to know if her approach was nostalgic or not, or. Mm. Uh, and you know, it's similar things happen as well. Mm. Uh, and you know, it's similar things happen as well. Uh, mm. And it took a 
é sobre essa tensão de ser uma europeia trabalhando no Brasil e é, como que outros imigrantes abordaram essa questão, outros casos de outros imigrantes, arquitetos que emigraram da Europa, italianos ou não. Ok. Of course, Lina, uh, we are talking about Occidental culture. So, our architecture in Brazil is the architecture with the matrix in, in, in the European modern movement, of course, is the same. In, in the, in the German and the, the British, all this movement of the modern, the, the modern people or modern uh, times in Europe. This is uh, our basis, our roots, in a way. Uh, but I think uh, Lina was not a, a very um, <laughs> normal architect, architect, because she used to go uh, to different areas, uh, sociology, anthropology, and all this, mixing everything, and doing something that, like uh, Ponti, fashion, uh, graphic design, uh, furniture, all this mix of uh, solutions, calling everything as architecture. This scenarios, uh, scenarios, set, designs. Uh, set, 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 set designs. designs. So yes, set designs for films also no, in, in theater and place. So this is not very common in, in uh, for the architects, like uh, many Europeans that went to America, North America, and I think in North America they have the same stream. They had this continuation of Europe movement, European movement. In Brazil, we had a, a shock, a completely different reality. So that's why Lina discovered in Brazil, this, in, at this moment, the, 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 the young and modern Brazilian architects, as Niemeyer, Lúcio Costa, uh, led uh, by Lúcio Costa. Lúcio Costa was very well uh, reminded. reminded here, because Lúcio Costa was a kind of father of all the group. Né? very linked to, Brazilian, to, to the Brazilian culture, in the, the popular culture, and the colonial culture, trying to, to transform, to translate the, the, the colonial architecture to a modern architecture. If you, if you go to the first Brazilian modern architect, you see many, many elements and solutions of the colonial architect. Something that you don't see in uh, some American uh, uh, architects, Americans or European Americans that had this rupture to be the, to this to start this international style. Lina was not affiliated to the international style. Eu queria só dizer uma coisa. É, a Lina dizia que as verdadeiras vanguardas eram as vanguardas do início do século XX, que continuavam sendo as verdadeiras vanguardas. So she used to say that the true avant-garde were the ones of the beginning of the century, of the 20th century, that, and that they continue to be up to date, even like in Russia. towards in, the... E principalmente as vanguardas russas, onde eh, toda a criação de tecidos, de, bom, vocês sabem, de móveis, de tudo, era a, a, o trabalho total, né? And, Com... and mainly she was influenced by the Russian avant-garde. Uh, where this idea of the total architect was also present. Uh, Hello. Um, I think that if uh, if there will be more time, let's say, for for one person, that perhaps the initial part of Lina in Brazil, uh, I can connect to Charlotte Perriand in Japan. Because I think that the two women mm. uh, in two very different places with a culture completely different, yeah. a native culture and a very sophisticated culture in Japan, but the way they have tried to uh, give an interpretation with a respect, but with uh, an energy, mm. uh, it's, very, it's very important. And perhaps it's something that in the future we can study. Or the same thing Charlotte Periana has done in the mountains, let's say, with the very poor um, furniture of the, of the high mountains in, in uh, solid wood. This is again very, very important to me and I can find 
something similar. With Pont, it was different because he, um, they had the same capacity of hearing persons and situations for me. But persons and situations were totally different. Because when uh, Ponti w w wants to speak with uh, a craftsman, he goes to Murano and he was talking to a person that has century and century of mm. culture. Or the, he was going to um, work in silver or um, papier mache. So it was always so involved in culture, in a culture that was Italian, French, and, and uh, uh, Austrian. This was the. Major. Roots, ma major roots of, of Ponti, I must say. So it, it's another kind of situation. Yeah. So Lina and Charlotte would be another exhibition. Ma, it can be. <laughs> Curiosamente, <laughs> curiosa Next one. <laughs> Ana, curiosamente, a Lina amava Charlotte Perrier. Ah, really? Yes. Yes. So, so Lina loved Charlotte <laughs> Perrier. And Charlotte Perrier writes about Lina in her autobiography. Yeah. So that's very interesting. Any uh, other questions? Hello. Uh, I think you j might have just answered my first questions about how do you compare the Glass House by Lina and Miss Van Swart's house? Yeah. Who is speaking? Maybe you to the female. Oh, the female. Um, so. Can you hear that? Yeah. Did you hear that? How you compare yeah. it? How, how, how you compare? I compare the house, the, the Miss and Lina. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you, you can see uh, all the, the structure, <laughs> the. the <laughs> You only you see the, the different roof, but the, the matrix the, 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 the is very Miss Van der Rohe, very, very Miss Van der Rohe. Uh, you, if you see the plants and uh, the, the sections and everything. But in that case, Lina tried to put the house uh, among the trees, the vegetation, trying to... And the shape of the roof is a little bit uh, soft, uh, not, uh, and the, the, the house has a little bit of, of a Brazilian structure in terms of division. You know, you have the, the bedrooms on back, uh, so you have this big salon uh, room. Uh, but uh, I think it's very close. The glass. Is there anything to do with surrealism, the way Lina approached the glass house? If Lina? Um, is there any relation between Lina and surrealism in, in her decision to build a glass house? Surrealism. surrealism. No, I talked about surrealism. I used this word. Because uh, Lina used to say, here in Brazil, you, you can say it is a surrealistic country. You can find uh, <laughs> uh, precious stones on, in the streets. You can find the people dancing, people creating. This was the atmosphere that the vanguard, uh, avant -garde, the European avant-garde, tried to, to invent here. And she used to say, there, there is this, this surreal situation. Uh, Ela dizia que ainda há índios nus. Em pleno século XX, você ainda tem índios pelados vivendo. Não contactados. Não contactados, nunca vistos. Yeah. So she used to say that there were still naked indigenous people lying around in, in the 20th century in Brazil, and this was an evidence for a natural surrealism. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe we take a last question and then we. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two. 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 Okay. So do you want three? <laughs> well, actually, it's not a question, but first of all, thanks to all of you and to Anna and Catalina for this occasion to share, I mean, thoughts. Uh, well, it's not a question, but I was thinking about um, what, when you were talking about uh, architects able to write about architecture, I mean, to make projects. Well, simply, Vitruvius didn't provide any drawing at all, <laughs> just only written text. And more, Leon Battista Alberti, probably the most famous and uh, treatise uh, on architecture yeah. during the Italian Renaissance, did not provide any drawing at all. I mean, drawings in Vitruvius were added in the latest uh, in the latest year of the Renaissance, 
by Andrea Palladio, somebody well known too. But, <laughs> well, this is the story. So eventually, for us, that we are very, I mean, we have to bear history, uh, the fact of a deal with uh, uh, written projects is a fact already, I mean, known in a way. And that belongs to a tradition eventually that we usefully may talk, we may name as humanist tradition at all. Well, good. sorry for not having no. mm. given a question. Very good. Very good. Okay, so we can still have a, a last question. I just wanted to know who you thought took the diaries and why. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that's the point. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. I will say. <laughs> <laughs> you say that. Say in Portuguese and then. <laughs> the family. The family. Yeah, the courage feminine. Diga aí. Yeah, the female courage. No, uh, havia uma um problema da da Lina com a irmã dela que herdou tudo. There was a personal problem Lina between Lina teve, Bobard and her sister, who Lina inherited teve, her work. Lina não teve filhos. So she didn't have children. E quando ela morreu, quer dizer, antes de morrer, o, os Bard venderam um Goya. So before they, uh, before she died, the Bardis, the Cabardi couple, they uh, sold a Goya painting. E com esse dinheiro criaram o um Instituto Lina Bo e PM Bard para cuidar da, da obra e para um centro de estudos e de referência. So with the money that they got from this painting, they created the institute, uh, Bart, the Bart Institute, uh, to uh, obviously store the work and also to be a study center or research center. E era muito dinheiro porque um goya naquele momento era muito dinheiro. Foi so comprado por japoneses. It was a lot of money because obviously goya was worth a lot of money and was bought by uh, Japanese. E depois da morte da Lina e do Bardi, muito disso desapareceu e atribui-se a não, essa não, a família. A família. <laughs> It's not the ponto. No, so <laughs> and then after they died, uh, lots of things disappeared and It's at, this is attributed to the family. E os diários, como eram diários íntimos, eu tive acesso a esses diários. So, is é, read the, in, the intimate di diaries? Era uma parte da Lina que acharam melhor desaparecer com isso. So it was a part of her that they didn't want to disseminate. É. And that maybe you will. Uh -huh. Talvez você vá disseminar. Não. Não. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, there is a question like here. Okay, okay, last one. Um, so the exhibition is titled "The Last of the Humanists," and of course, we place importance on on humanism, as you say, post economic crisis. Perhaps it's a good time to talk about. Uh, and humanism is a a term descending from perhaps philosophy. Would you say, in architectural terms, there's a way for us to perhaps classify it as a movement or a set of principles that we might be able to learn from? If I understand, is to adopt cer uh, certain principles of humanism. of humanism. Humanism is produce architecture for the people not for them, no, not for as a, a formalistic of, or, or a show or this or that, is to be architect, thinking in the people and doing, working for the people, for the needs, human needs. This is very straight, but that's what I think. But perhaps the problem is that it's difficult to imagine a movement on humanism because humanism is something that is inside persons. So you can uh, imagine a movement beginning now on a, with the child, with the children, and perhaps in 20 years you are going to be a humanistic architecture. It's not something that we can decide here on a table because it's something that means to be 
cultivated to be educated in a certain way and to have a certain approach to life before then to architecture. So uh, it was of Lina, of Ponti, of some others, but it's difficult. We, we can fight for this reason, but for next generation, not, not, I think not for us. If we are not humanistic, we can't become humanistic. Yeah, yeah just yes. remember that the, the, this, this uh, principle and this attitude we could find also in other modernist architects as Aldo Van Eyck and uh, Tim Tam, for example. So this is not a movement, but you have this people engaged for better life, maybe. Okay, so I think that's a very good point to end. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Thank you Dr. for the speaker. Thank you.